just want to say something to you as a congregation. We, um, let me see, I think it was Wednesday night, we were mentioning this, just discussing this briefly. Um, yeah, you need to hear this, I guess. As I was praying on Monday, I had a sanctuary to myself like I do this week, which is a blessing. So if you guys want to come and join me, just don't talk to me while I'm in here praying, because that would be offensive. But um, uh, one of the things that the Lord laid on my heart was, uh, you know, as you start to pray in the world, not the bad part of the world, just all the things you got to do starts really coming in and coming in hard and fast. The Lord said to me, or I heard, that's not what you're here for. That's not what you're here for. And um, I want to give you an opportunity as a congregation, as we go to prayer, to focus on what we are here for. And the world wants its time. No, the world has enough of our time. Our flesh wants our time. Uh Uh-uh. The devil wants our time. Uh Uh-uh. We're here for the person of Jesus Christ. And we're here to focus on him, on him that is not what I'm here for. I'm not here for the world. The world's voice is so loud, so loud, and wants a piece of us. So let's go to the Lord in prayer as we worship him. Thank you, my brother. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your presence, number one here. We worship you this morning. As we head toward the Easter season, we want you to know, Lord, that that you are paramount in our mind and our focus Lord, we love you, and today we are here together as a congregation just to lift you up and to praise you. Again, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together. Just just a reminder, this week, this Wednesday, uh, we will not have... Uh, Mercy, are, are the youth having Wednesday night? No. So all of our ministries... I know, Susu's crying. Susu's crying. No youth. So... Um, this Wednesday, there's no men's, no women's, and no youth. We're off. And um, just be in prayer for Easter as it approaches. And then I just want to remind you as well, too, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, on Sunday mornings, we have Sunday Bible study. And um, 9, 9.15, they get started, and they go till about 9.20 or 10.20. That'd be a short Bible study, wouldn't it? <laughs> five minutes. I've been some places where five minutes is too long. But that would be short. And uh, I want to invite you to participate in that if you'd like to come. So that's every Sunday morning at 9.15. And uh, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Psalms. Psalms 105 this morning. Psalms 105. It has been a blessing the last couple of weeks, two out of the last three weeks for Stephen, um, Philip's friend, to come on Wednesday night to to men's study. And uh, after he came... Two weeks ago, uh, at some point within the last two weeks, he decided to take 48 hours and binge season one, two, and three of The Chosen. And um, he couldn't put it down. And I, we started men's Bible study on Wednesday night, and I just simply asked him, I said, Stephen, why did you binge all three seasons of The Chosen? And he said that. He said, he said it was so good, I couldn't stop watching it. And I said, what did you like about it? And he said, the person of Jesus, the guy who, who played it, the director, you know, the writers, um, he was so authentic. He was so genuine. And in Stephen's words, he was, uh, or in my words, he's so real. And um, the, the fact that he has a sense of humor, you know, in scripture. We forget that, that Jesus was a real person and genuine and from that, we, we have to ask ourselves the question, how does this real, genuine, authentic person want to be worshipped? How does he want to be loved and cared for? He's real. He's real. He's genuine. He's authentic. How do we present ourselves in a way that is a blessing to him? Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And we have to ask ourselves the question, how is God receiving blessing from me? That's what we come to do on Sunday mornings. We come to bless, we come, some translations place it to praise him. Now, um, uh, last week I gave an illustration about, a little bit about Philip, and he wasn't here, so I'm going to reiterate it. 
as well. I, I went over it on Wednesday night, so I'm going to rub it in again this morning. And this is important. I talked about the fact that when I go to praise the Lord, I keep my hand open. And there's a reason. And whenever I say that, Philip looks at me and he says, I know, I'm holding the Lord's hand. No, I'm not. I got to a place, Philip, where that doesn't work anymore. And I didn't tell you this on Wednesday night. But holding the Lord's hand doesn't work because implied to me is the thought process, I need your strength. Well, I need more than that. My hand open is my way of saying to him, I submit. I yield. I bow to you and you have authority right now. I acknowledge your presence. I know that you're here and you're God and you're in charge. And I want you to know, I want you to use me. But first, I have to submit. I have to yield to you. And I think genuinely that's one of the ways that we can. What does it say here in the text? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. O my soul is another. You ever talk to yourself? All the time. All the time. No, let's not give up too much information. I mean, I... I no, I talk to myself all the time too, Amber. I'm constantly. But what kind of message are you sending yourself? Is it centered around Dave? Is, yeah, it is. Oftentimes the message I'm sending myself is about me. Where the message needs to be about him. And here the message is, bless the Lord, Dave. David wrote this. He's the writer of this psalm. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is. It's a command. He's commanding himself and working himself up to where he should be in making the Lord happy. Blessing the Lord. Like I said, other translations say to praise the Lord. But it also means, and I think the core meaning of blessing the Lord is make the Lord happy. How do I make him happy? One commentator says that we are to, in light of the fact that he's real, authentic, and genuine, we need to not just submit to him, but we need to show him genuine affection. We, know, we need to show him affection, and we need to show him gratitude as well. I would write that down. How does the Lord feel blessed when we come to praise him, when we give our life? And, and that's the other part. God says, listen, I want your life. I beseech you, I beg you by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. This is your reasonable act of worship. I want your life. Lay your life down and let me have it. And that's the way the Lord is blessed. That's the way we make the Lord happy. And it's through affection that we, and you ask yourself, am I genuinely coming to the Lord in praise and showing him affection? I don't know how many times this week I'm like, well, that wasn't very affectionate. Spending some hours in prayer and just clocking time today. Where's the affection? Where's the gratitude, Dave? Those are the voices I was, where's your gratitude? Gratitude is another way of saying grateful, 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 gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Is that, is that what's supposed to be happening? Yes. And I think also in line with who wrote this particular psalm, David showed the Lord great zeal. That made the Lord happy. Great passion in representing him. Affection, passion, zeal, gratitude. Those are the core things that make the Lord happy. When we speak to our soul and we're commanding our soul, those are the things that we need to bring before the Lord that causes him to be blessed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his whole, all Every part of me, my personality needs to bless him. My hands need to bless him. My tongue, my lungs, my mind, my will, my emotions need to bless the Lord. I was convicted this week as I was going to him in prayer. I'm like, man, you are just not cutting the mustard. You really stink when it comes to this thing of praise. Let's go back to square one. The Lord is here in this place. Do your hands, your tongue, your lungs, your mind, your will, your emotions. Show him your affection. Show him your praise. Show him your heart. The command comes. David is talking to himself like the crazy person that he is. And I am. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Here, he says there's another reason for blessing the Lord as well too. What is it? 
Two commands. One is my soul, the, everything that is within me needs to bless his name. Okay? And the other thing is this. We have a tendency f- to forget. It's Monday, and all of a sudden we have a, a need, a problem, a situation. Lord, you have to show up for me. And Wednesday come, and comes, and we have another situation, and we have forgotten his faithfulness from Monday all the way to Wednesday, and now the situation on Wednesday is impossible. God can't help. Forget not what? What does it say? Verse 2, is it? Forget not all his, his benefits. His benefits. I think the key benefit, and let me read through the benefits here very quickly, but the key benefit that is repeated throughout Psalms 103 is the steadfast love of the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord. Listen to what it says here in verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities, that's number one, and he goes into great detail from verses 9 through 12 about our iniquities. Um, who forgives all of our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. Now he's talking to us, who crowns us, and here's the key, with steadfast love and mercy. I need that. Who satisfies us with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I want to address that as well too. So he gives us a list of the benefits and kind of like the framework of where he's going. But the key element here is what? The steadfast love of the Lord. I thought to myself, I thought, I need to go ahead, you know, do, do, do diligence. And you're looking at the text, so you need to look up the definition for steadfast love. And I think I tried to. And I tried to multiple times, and it is as if the Lord was saying, look at the text. The text will define the steadfast love of the Lord. God's love is steadfast. What does it mean? It doesn't go away. He will never leave us nor forsake us. It is always there. His love is constantly there. But how is it displayed? It's displayed in his benefits. What does it look like? Listen to what it says here. It says, the Lord's works. He works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. But not only that, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. And then verse 8. So verse 8 through 12 defines the benefits as far as the way that the Lord forgives our sin. First and foremost, the way that the Lord deals with us, the thing that we need to be most grateful for, the thing that we need to show him affection for, is number one, how he deals with our iniquities, how he deals with our sin. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. Anger against what? He doesn't deal with us according to our sin. Sin angers God. But listen, listen to the the steadfast. How is the steadfast love of the Lord revealed to us in in the way that he deals with sin? How is it? He will not always chide us. He will... He will keep his, not always be angry with us forever, it says here. And here's the key. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. It goes on. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. Here's the key. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. This is the way he deals with sin. The the reason we are to be grateful to him. The reason we are to show him affection and zeal and passion is what he has done with our sin. So oftentimes we do not understand the way he deals with our sin in accordance with his steadfast love. So oftentimes I listen in men's group as men are carrying around a load of guilt and a load of shame and the reality is right here he says, listen, I do not pay sin in your life the recompense that it's deserved. It says here, and David would know this better than anybody else. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Listen to it in context. This is David, right? So, if the Lord were to repay us according to our sins and deal with us as our iniquities dictate, then what the Lord should have done was, the Lord should have sent someone into his life to take his number one girl and have adultery with her. And then deviously behind the sins manipulate a situation where David is put to death. That would be dealing with David in accordance of his sin. David knew better than anybody else how God deals with sin. His steadfast love is shown to us that he's not going to be angry with us forever. 
forgives and forgives our iniquity. How does he forgive our iniquity? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed my sin from me. And this is a measurement. This is another way of saying this is infinity. There is no way of measuring here on earth um, a greater way of the way that God deals with our sin, his passion towards us, his love. This is the definition of his steadfast love for us. And notice that it is in keeping. It's, it's, it's tied closely with the fear of the Lord as well too. A couple of months ago, we talked about the fear of the Lord and how it isn't just a reverence, but it is also a fear that causes us to obey. A fear that causes us to repent and to change along the way. And that's coming from belief as well in our life. David's commanding us to do what? He's commanding himself to do what? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not all of his benefits. Bless the Lord. And from where do we come from that? It's because of his benefits, his steadfast love. So this is the way that he deals with our iniquity. A couple other things as well too. It says here in verse 5, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, it doesn't say your youth is renewed like the youthful eagles, but it's renewed like an eagle. Has anybody ever done any research on um, uh, eagles or falcons or osprey? They are, they are a unique bird. If you have ever watched them in the air, they're beautiful to watch. Their dexterity their, their, um, the way that they handle the wind currents. About 5.30 in the morning, my, I'm on the back porch, and we're blessed because all of creation is right there on, on the edge of our property, and it's quiet, and then I hear this loud splash into our plake. It's a pond and a lake. It's, it's, it's a lawn. It's a lawn. It's not quite a pond. It's not... All of a sudden, like flying out of this pond is this large bald eagle with its talons grasping something. And let me tell you folks, it's dark outside. I can see him just barely. So he's been up hundreds of feet in the air in the dark, like riding the wind currents and then splashes down into the water to get his prey. Bird of prey. And it says here in the text, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, because of his benefits. Why? He renews our strength like that of eagles. He renews our strength like that of the young eagles. He brings us to a place where he says, I give you good that you might be replenished so that you can turn around and with affection and gratitude and with a heart of love say, listen, Lord, I want to bless you back. I want to show you the love that you have shown me. Not just, and I think that's a physical attribute as well as diseases as well. He, he does what? He cures all of our diseases. All right, put that in context. If he cured everybody's diseases all the time, we'd all still be hanging around. Some guys, 4,000 years, another one, right? And what it means in context is this. If you had a disease, if you had an illness, and he healed it, it was him. It wasn't anybody else. It wasn't something you did. It wasn't the doctor. It was him behind the doctor. It was him behind the nurse. It was him working his good in your life that you might be healed. What do we get? Bacterias, viruses. Everybody dies of cancer, right? Eventually they find that you have cancer in your body. We all die of something. Here it says the Lord does what? He redeems your life from the pit. He heals all of your diseases. God, listen, God through David this morning is defining what his steadfast love is. He says, I have great reason for you to bless me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's not physical, it's spiritual in the blessings, the way that he handles sin. It goes on to say this. Look at verse 13. As a father shows compassion to his child, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, that's mankind, that's humanity. His days or their days are like grass. He flourishes like the flower of the field. And the wind passes over it and it is gone. And listen to this. Its place, its place what? Its place knows it no more. 
its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Here we have a compare and a contrast. Or just a contrast. First we have human, the human frailty of man, the, the fact that his frame and the way that he was formed, he is like dust, it says here. And he, we're compared to grass or the flower of the grass. And the flower of the field does what? Well, the wind passes over it and it's gone. And it's, this is key, its place remembers it no more. Like if you ever went looking for somebody that you knew 30 years ago and you go to that place that they used to live, say I go back to my hometown and I look for someone. Have you seen Doug Perkins? No. We've never even heard of him. And its place remembers him no more. That's the, that's the reality of who man is. I'll never forget Tom Seaver being inducted into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame and he's crying with tears. And some of you are sitting here going, who is Tom Seaver? Well, his, he's crying because he's like, my great-grandchildren can come here and they can come to Cooperstown and they can see my bust and they can remember me. No, they won't. They won't remember you. Well, that's your great-great-grandfather. Good, I'll go tell my friends. Do you guys know who Tom Seaver is? No? Shut up. <laughs> it's place does not even remember it. This is our form. This, we are dust. This is our frailty. This is who we are. But listen to the contrast. Listen to the way that he deals with us. The steadfast love is from everlasting to everlasting. We deal in terms of time when it comes to humanity. We think of a beginning and an end. And he says, no, everlasting is eternity past. And eternity into the future. My steadfast love extends to the children's children. You want a reputation? You want to be known for years to come? Just point people to Jesus. And that's the way in which you will be known. Here, here he says, listen, that's the emphasis of the passage. Listen, I'm so beyond this stupid, weird little existence of humanity. We are like dust. The place remembers it no more. What are you living for in this world that is so important, that's beyond me? My love, my steadfast love is from everlasting to everlasting, from eternity past, and it's extended to your children's children. Live for that as your legacy and your heritage. I am your heritage. Point people to me. This is my steadfast love to you. And to, what does it say? To those who fear him. Four times, or three times I think it is. Yeah, the third time it's mentioned here, those who fear him. And then it says right at the end, or no, right in verse 18, to those who keep his covenant, to those who remember his commandments. That's the manifestation of the fear of the Lord. We fear him, we love him, and it changes how that we live our life. We want to obey him. And that's the end product as well too. Here God speaks, or David speaks of God's um, sovereignty in verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. So as we look at the whole of the psalm, we see the definition of the steadfast love of the Lord. How it never leaves us, his mercy his mercy is, is, it's new every morning, isn't it? It was on our bulletin this morning. Lamentations 3. His mercy is new every morning. It never fails. Great, great is his faithfulness. We are grateful, grateful, grateful because he is faithful, faithful, faithful. And he says, forget not. Our tendency is to do what? Our tendency is to forget from day to day, we forget his goodness. From day to day, all of a sudden, it's Wednesday, like I said, and Monday, and hopelessness has, has taken hold of us. And God says, no. David gives a charge to others other than himself right at the end. Let's look at the end. We're getting close to the end. Let the children rejoice. We're getting close to the end. But like any good preacher, let me throw you a curveball and speak for another 20 minutes. No, just kidding. And that kid's like, oh, we're almost done. Good, I'm hungry. 
Yes, verse 20. Bless the Lord, O you his angels. Not just any angels, it's the mighty ones who do his word. The, the angels, the mighty ones who obey the voice of the Lord. I'm thinking of those angels that went to Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm thinking of Gabriel. I'm thinking of Michael. Those are the mighty angels that he sent out to do specific things. He says, listen, you have an obligation. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, angels. And then he says, Did it, do I leave, leave any angels out? Look at the next verse, 21. Bless the Lord, all you, his host. These are the armies of angels. These are the smaller ranking angels. He says, you too, you ministers of the Lord who do his will. And then it goes on, wait, I, verse 22. In all places, oh no, no, I was right. His ministers who do his will, all of the vast numbers of his armies of angels do what? Bless the Lord. Make him happy. How, hey, are you guys going to make the Lord happy this week? Have you made plans to make him happy this week? Lord, I want to bless you this week. I want to be a blessing to you. I want to show you in my zeal. I want to show you in my faithfulness, in my affection, my gratitude, in my passion for you, in my faith for you. I want to bless you. The angels are charged here. Bless the Lord, the mighty ones, as well as the hosts. And then, here's verse what? Verse 22. Bless the Lord, all his works. So this encompasses everything with what? I already stated it. In all places of his dominion. So all of his works in all places of his dominion are, are charged to do what? To bless the Lord. Everything. Everything. You know, I'm thinking as I, like, worship early in the morning on my back porch. Let's go back there, right? Screened in. It's got to be screened in in Florida. Yes, when you, when you face the, what do you call it? The Serengeti. Did you ever call it? You have to have it screened in. Bugs will get you. We have, like I've shared with you in the past, Limpkin season. Anybody know what Limpkin is? They're nice and loud and squawky. And they're very territorial. And like Jill said recently, the one that we have is, he's a little bit of a distance off, so his, his voice isn't as loud. But this one's more, he's very territorial, but like he will calm down when he hears one, another limpkin from way off. And you can hear them, like they're little territories and they're yelling in the morning. And they usually do it like two hours before. But when they quiet down, I can hear like this buzz, this I don't know if they're crickets, but you can hear the insects just making a humming, chiming sound. His creation, the works of his hands. And then everything's quiet. All the animals and all the birds have calmed down. And you hear the insects. And then you hear the bullfrog over here. And then a bullfrog speaks to another one over here. This week, I heard, Christina has shared that we have, we have monkeys in Florida. Apparently, they... They were offloaded in Tampa at the port here, I don't know, decades ago. And we have monkeys in central Florida. And I thought I was hearing monkeys. But as I listened closely, I'm like, that's a pack of dogs. They're yelping and there's a group of them. And they're off in the Serengeti, the woods. Uh, coyotes. That's what I think they were. We're talking about coyotes in every county. And they calm down. And then all of a sudden, Kitty, you, you, you know how big my cat is, right? <laughs> See the laughter it evokes? She's been doing this thing. She's the one who wants to go out on the porch. She, she sits up on her back legs, and then she just kind of rests on her fat and her back legs. But then she gives this look. And whenever she raises up and she looks, I know I got a wild boar within 50 feet of me. Right there, because she's like spooked and she's looking at me like, man, if you head to the door, I'm going to beat you there. You know, she is no guard cat. Uh, wild boars. Tuesday morning, I'm videotaping. And there's a dawn, a dawn, a doe and her fawn scamper through the backyard. All of creation is to bless the Lord with the purpose by which it is made whether it's the insects. But it doesn't just say my creation that has lungs and blood, right? 
It says all of my creation. So we're talking about stones and trees and, and foliage. We're talking about subatomic particles and the universe and nebulas. Everything for the purpose of praising God. It has been created to bless the Lord in its purpose. And finally here, look at the last verse. What does it say? What does it say right at the end, the last phrase? Bless the Lord who? Oh, my soul. That's the purpose. For he has done great things. For he has done great things. Andre Crouch in the 70s sang this song. Bless the Lord. Anybody else know it? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then he says this. He has done great things. He has done great things. The only problem with that particular chorus is that it's talking past tense. Here he says, forget not all his past, present, and future tense benefits that he has for us. We are commanded, as David commands himself to bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, my personality, my hands, my lungs, my tongue, my mind, will, and emotions, to bless the Lord. How do we bless him? Anybody write it down this morning? First thing we bless him with is our a love and affection, thank you. With our gratitude. With our passion. With our passion, with our zeal. As David did. Let's all stand together this morning. Please be in prayer for Easter. I, um, I so appreciate your attendance to this church like the non-event times but you also do such a great job of rallying the troops together for Easter's for the times of, of our events where we try to bring those people who don't normally come I want you to do that I want you to start praying for people who they're going to be the CEO the Christmas Easter only people but at least they can come and they can be a part of Easter and celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, they need to be plugged in. They need to be plugged in to God, right? Most, most importantly. Let's go to him in prayer this morning. I want you to take the time right now to push back the thoughts of the world, the loud voice of the world in your life right now. Don't listen to it. It's not what you're here for. Father, this morning we, we pray that you've accepted this time of our worship and our time in which we would bless you and praise you. Lord, you are the reason why we are here. Lord, as we go throughout our work week and we meditate on what you want us to do and our purpose here in life, Lord, help us not to forget your benefits, the goodness, Lord, of the steadfast love that never leaves. Father, you are faithful, faithful, faithful to us. And this morning we lift up praise to you. And Lord, I pray this week we would remember that we have opportunities around us constantly to bless your heart and bless you, Jesus, by showing you our affection. Father, we praise you. Lord, this week we, we purpose in our hearts to give you all of our problems, all of our situations, and to push back, Lord, that voice of the world, and to listen to you. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name.
terrain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise Lord, we show you the gratitude. We give you the glory this morning and every morning. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, bless your children as they leave your home today and bring your glory out into the world for the light to shine. We ask this in your heavenly name. Amen. Thank you all so very much for joining us this morning. Again, Wednesday, no studies. So we will see you all next Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us the faith to trust you. It is sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sin and self to cease Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove to Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Thank you, Lord, so much for bringing us together to worship you to praise your holy name this morning. Please be with our pastor as he delivers your message of hope, peace, and love. We ask this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. 